to another video or if this is your first video of mine hey how you doing today i am bringing you my january haul and i have somehow managed to haul 10 books without spending any real money <laughs> i'm really not sure how i feel about this top like horizontal not horizontal vertical stripes are always a bit hit or miss aren't they what do you think of it it's actually like a really long dress thing i don't know how i feel about it let me know what you think. Anyway, yes, 10 books. I haven't spent a single penny of my own money on any of these books. I had a ton of vouchers from Christmas and I still haven't actually used them all. So yeah, I will just take you through the 10 books that I have. Some of these I have already read and by some I mean two. Yeah, let's just crack on with it. The first book I got and my first purchase of the year was The Wolf Princess by Catherine Constable. This was one that I got because I was seriously still like deep into my polar fantasy vibes and I just went into Waterstones, found one of the lovely ladies that work in my local one and um, said I really crave polar fantasy, what do you recommend? And this was one of her recommendations. So I picked it up, I read it immediately. It's only a small one and it is a middle grade one. It's about a girl called Sophie who's always dreamed of going to Russia and she, with a weird turn of events, ends up going to Russia and meeting a princess. Next up we have Sky Song by Abby Elphinstone. This again is a middle grade polar fantasy. This was the children's book of the month for January um, and this was adorable. I loved it. You know how much I loved Polar Bear Explorer Club and that was the children's book of the month for December and this is the January one. I, I adored this just as much as I adored that one. Super cute story. This follows the story of Eska who has been captured by the Ice Queen and the Ice Queen is evil um, and there's the sky gods who are like the northern lights and the sky gods disappear and their lands are in peril because of the Ice Queen and Eska could potentially be the key to saving everything. It was an adorable middle grade polar fantasy. If oh, I love it, I recommend it. If you like middle grade, this was just such a cute, feel good, happy book and I loved it. And when I picked up Sky Song, it was on the Waterstones buy one get one half price thing. So I also picked up Witchborn by Nicholas Bowling. Bowling? Bowling? Bowling. One, because of this cover. Like, can you see how stunning this cover is? Like, if you want an autumnal cover, I mean, I know it's winter at the minute, but like, this cover is gorgeous. <sighs> what year is this set in? 1577. So, normally dates put me off, but this is about witches and witches in the 1500s and how they're like, you know, any woman is seen as a witch and Alice is in Bedlam Asylum, mad they say, and her mother was killed, I think her mother was killed for being a witch or something. Witches, they ain't nothing but fairy stories and all over England, women getting killed just because they know things. This seems so cool to me, but I think as much as it is about women being accused of being witches for just being knowledgeable women, I think there is an element of actual witchcraft in here. Yeah. So. It's about Alice who is put into an asylum for being mad. Her mother was executed for witchcraft. Her home's been destroyed, um, but maybe she isn't as broken as she seems. Um, she has to navigate the dark streets of London where there's a secret waiting to be unraveled. And in an England divided by rival queens, it seems Alice has a part to play if only she can master the rising power within her. So as much as it's about like witches, I think there's also some sort of like actual witchcraft involved in here. And I'm excited about it. I then picked up Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This is one that's kind of been like on the radar for ages. Like I've been meaning to buy it and I just never have. And as I had all these vouchers, I found myself in Waterstones. There it was. I thought, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity to just buy it because for some reason you haven't yet. And here I am with it. Honestly, I don't know too much about this one other than the fact that it's been really popular and the sequel was Wind Witch and there's another one coming out fairly soon. So I would like to get involved in this. Also, the cover is stunning. But from what I know, it's about a witch who had like truth witch, the ability to know when people are lying and what the truth is and stuff. And like, 
their truth witches are rare so she's being like hunted or something so people can use her for her power that's kind of what i'm getting i don't know how accurate i am but i am pumped for this one as well next up i got a couple of books that jess from jess reads books would was recommending one of which well actually both of which i knew i really wanted to read anyway but the fact that she loved them just made me want to read them even more and the first one of those is Sleeping Giants by, who is this by? Uh, Sylvain Nouvel. Um, I've still got the sticker on this, I should probably take that off. But from what Jess has said about this, it's like told in interviews, and the interviewer apparently is a really interesting character, but it's about a girl who, does she fall down a hole or something? She ends up underground and she finds like the massive arm of a robot and they discover that there was a civilization many years before that was way more advanced than current humankind and they had these massive gigantic robot things like I, again i don't know how accurate my portrayal of what i know is but i'm really excited to read this quite a few people have read it and really enjoyed it so i am totally up for this. Also the cover is beautiful. Then another one that Jess recommended and one that I just knew I wanted to read anyway because of my whole polar fantasy vibes and I've learnt I'm really into Russian folklore. The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I'm currently reading this, I'm about 100 pages in and I'm loving it so much. As I say, Russian folklore, this is just Russian. So much Russian folklore but also we've got that like wintery vibe which I'm still really into. Magic, I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. So so much. So naturally when the sequel came out the other day I bought that as well. So this is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. Unfortunately you know this is the hardback and this is the paperback so my series will never match but I'm not too bothered by that. I'm not the sort of person that is like really anal about things like that. Again, I don't know much about this, I don't want to know much about this because I know it follows on from Bear and the Nightingale and I haven't finished that yet so I'm not going to read anything about this but I know that it is the sequel to that so again we'll have all the Russian folklore in here and I'm really excited about that. I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram but um, the next couple of books I have already shown on my Instagram because I got a parcel from Annie. I can't remember her Instagram thing, it's like bookish journaling or books and bookish journaling um, and she sent me a parcel which was adorable I'm so thankful for that and in it she sent me an ember in the ashes and a torch against the night by Sawa Tahir I'm so pumped to have both of these they are the hardbacks I know I'm normally a paperback person but they're so pretty in the hardbacks and this one's got like the metallic spine I love it so much and now I have them both I have no excuse not to read them so I am super excited to see what both of these are about because honestly again I don't know too much about them and I don't want to I know they're super popular though so I am excited and very grateful to Annie so Yay. Next up I have a book that was sent to me by HarperCollins and the author and that is Cold Maker by Daniel Cohen. Daniel reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in this and I absolutely am. This sounds so interesting. This is about a land that's been like forced into living in a land of scorching heat. There is no cold so it's like the total opposite of all this like polar fantasy I'm on. These people are living in a land where rivers are boiling, like everything is so hot and they're like enslaved in this land and there is a certain character that has a secret and that secret might be something to do with cold. From the title Cold Maker I'm guessing this guy has some sort of like ability for cold things so Although the setting might be the total opposite of this polar fantasy thing I'm on, if this main character has like some sort of cold powers or cold something going on, I I'm excited for this. It sounds really fascinating. So the back here says the cold only fell for the nobles here, everyone else was unworthy. So cold still exists, but 
these people are like enslaved into this world of scorching heat and I'm I'm just really excited to read this um, and let you all know what I think about it but also the cover like I don't know if you can see because it's really white if I'd like to do that the cover is absolutely stunning too so I'm pumped by this. I'm pumped by all of these. Can you see the little stack I've built just here? <laughs> this little stack here. I think I've done quite well for a month of not spending any of my own money to have a stack this big for a haul. So go me, well done. And thank you to everyone that got me vouchers. <laughs> I'm still going on this three to one ratio thing. However, none of these count towards my three to one ratio because vouchers didn't count. So I'm doing really well for, according to my New Year's resolution to do this three to one thing. I haven't bought any books because vouchers don't count. <laughs> Is that cheating? I don't think so. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. If you've read any of these books, if you have opinions, if you wanna chit chat, whatever, then drop me a comment down below. I hope you have enjoyed. Give us a thumbs up if you have. If you aren't subscribed and fancy subscribing, I'm always eternally grateful for that. I upload every Sunday and Wednesday and some days in between if I'm feeling generous. And I'll see you next time. Bye.